What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Times. What's up? What's up? And Yvonne Maynard. What up? What is going on? So uh, make sure you tune in throughout the week. Uh, Monday, we talked about a replay attack that's affecting uh, Apple users in a specific uh, use case with uh, Visa cards. So definitely check that out. Uh, on Tuesday's episode, uh, we talked about the FCC shoring up some uh, loopholes when it comes to SIM swap attacks. There's a, a really good uh, information in that one. Uh, definitely check it out. And now today, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is uh, breaking up. So I'm trying not to talk too much. But uh, today I posed the question, has ransomware passed the point of uh, no return? So in this article uh, that was on the Wall Street Journal um, by Kevin Polson, Robert Mac McMillan, and uh, um, Melanie Evans, or Melanie Evans, I'm sorry. Um, it's a hospital hit by hackers, a baby in distress, the case of the first alleged ransomware death. So uh, this is potentially the first recorded um, ransomware death. I'm sure others have happened in the past due to second and third order effects, right? Um, unfortunately, in this case, uh, it has to do with a baby. Um, to quickly surmise it, because I don't want to take up too much time, and again, my voice is starting to fail. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, it states for nearly, uh, I'm going through puberty right now, excuse me. <laughs> for nearly eight days, computers had been disabled on every floor, a real-time wireless tracker that could locate medical staff around the hospital was down. Years of patient health records were uh, inaccessible at the nurse's desk. In the labor and delivery unit, medical staff were cut off from the equipment that monitors fetal heart rates in the 12 delivery rooms. Uh, this directly impacted the, uh, the birth of a, a, a baby um, who subsequently uh, passed away nine months uh, later. Uh, uh, if you read into the article, the umbilical cord was wrapped around the baby's neck and they couldn't tell the baby was in distress and the baby was born naturally and obviously had complications due to the cord uh, being around um, its neck for so long, cutting off oxygen. Um, had they not had this ransomware attack, obviously, they would have access to all the systems, and most unlikely, this would not have been a problem. Um, the hospital and the doctor point fingers at one another, because um, the hospital was the, the, the one that were under attack. Uh, the doctors were briefed about the uh, said attack, but again, they didn't have the tools and resources uh, to which the doctor said, had he had the resources, he probably would have um, uh, delivered a baby cesarean um, to alleviate the distress. Um, so the mom is suing uh, because of the uh, the subsequent death of her uh, her child, and she was never made aware that there was a ransomware uh, attack and that it was affecting their systems. So uh, from her perspective, she had no clue. Maybe that would have changed things. Um, perhaps, uh, not, not even maybe, it probably most likely would have changed things. So the article kind of tries to figure out who's at fault. Is it the doctor's uh, fault for not disclosing this information and monitoring uh, more uh uh, effectively is the hospital's fault for being the ones who were uh, attacked obviously their systems were not secure um and they they were hit by this and it, it lasted for eight days and never it does the article doesn't go into great detail if they paid or what have you but they come up off backups uh it's more focused on the situation with the mother and her child and, and the, the subsequent lawsuit so the question is uh has ransomware passed the point of no return so uh, i give it to you shannon so <laughs> I feel I feel a few different things about this. So to say it's gone past the point of no return, yes, because a life was lost, right? Um, I'll say yes, because you'll never get that back, right? Um, it's just not going to happen. Now, to say that this is the first time this has happened, I don't know. This might be the first time it's been reported, but I find it hard to believe because in the article, um, they don't specifically attribute it to one group, but it is believed that it's the group Ryuk, R-Y-U-K, um, and they were known for going after hospitals, right? I think it mentioned in there they went after like 230 some odd hospitals from like 20, uh, 2018 to now or something like that. Uh, the hospitals, psychiatric units, things of that nature. So if they were doing this at this location and this happened, I find it hard to believe they hit 235 hospitals and there was not an issue where there was some type of uh, death of a child or, or a patient that could have been 
uh, been ill anyway. You know what I mean? Um, it's probably just one of those things that wasn't reported, but I, man, yes, we're past the point of no return. Um, I don't think this is ever going to stop. Um, even with the fines, I know we say, you know, go out there, give them, give them, well, you can't even say give them fines because these people are criminals anyway. They don't care about that, right? Maybe give them real jail time. Maybe that's something that'll make them make them think harder on it. But this situation was tra- this situation was tragic, um, and and it was tragic. It, it it was tragic that it happened. And what's even more tragic is that nobody wants to take responsibility for it. So the hospital says the doctor should have been the one to notify um, this woman that was having the baby, right? Um, the doctor was like, well, no, that's not my fault. I wasn't properly notified of the condition of the patient, which falls in the hospital, right? Like you have this equipment and everything, but it's a little weird in that when they were under, when they first came under attack, they went out and they consulted with their staff, their, their doctors and things like that. And they, they asked them, they were like, do you think we could still go forward and proceed business as usual? You know, I hate to say business because it's a hospital, but hospitals are businesses nowadays. That's what they do. They're there to make money. Um, and they said yes. They said they thought they could continue um, even without even without full access to everything that they need. I mean, they had systems that were shut down. The reason this one was the reason this one, as you alluded to, the reason this one was so so uh, tragic in, in how it ended was that um, they actually talk about how the nurses station had a monitor that was hooked up to a system that was not working. Like it, it monitors fetal heartbeats and things like that for people that were in labor. Um, or soon to go into labor, uh, ready to deliver. And it was not working at the time, right? So they couldn't tell this baby was in distress. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know who to blame here, right? Because even if the doctor had said something like, what would, what would this, what would this person's options have been? I don't know where the next closest hospital that could have helped her was. Um, if she's in, if she's in a big city area, um, I don't even remember where this took place. Do you remember where this took place, Ryan? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'll look for it. Article, um, but uh, Spring Hill Medical Center, wherever that is at, Alabama. It was in Alabama. So in Alabama, I'm not going to sit here and say you know Alabama has a lot of hospitals all over the place, right? It, it, it may be a large state land wise, but it doesn't have a lot of people that live there, so there's probably not a lot of hospitals, right? So her choices may have been limited anyway. She may not have been able to go over to a hospital two counties away or whatever it may have been, right? This may have been her only option. Um, for what she needed. Um, but yeah, re- th- this is, this has gone too far with this. this it's stuff like this is just, it, it's tragic. Uh, I find it hard to believe it is the only time it's happened. Um, it just hasn't been reported yet. And this may be the spark that lights it up to where all of a sudden you'll start seeing more cases come. They'll be like, well, yeah, well, this happened in 2017, you know, 2018, you know, they'll start coming out. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I hate to see this, right? Because a young life was lost. Um, but uh, as I've said before already, it, uh, I'm almost positive it's not the first time, but it's still it's still sad. But uh, LaVon, what's your thoughts on this, man? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think it's, uh, I'm sure it's not the first time. I mean, it just is uh, as many hospitals and stuff they've attacked. And even, you know, even uh, um, with the, uh, the pipeline, I'm sure that kind of like, uh, maybe not directly, but it probably caused somebody to pass away from not having access to some, you know, uh, some resources they needed or some people are trying to, or, or acting a fool, trying to get gas and having fights and whatever. Uh, there's little things like that. You probably, probably don't even know about it. Probably had some sort of like relation to that whole situation, but uh, without a doubt with the, with the hospitals being attacked, I mean, you gotta, you gotta imagine there's gotta be some patients out there that have been affected by this. And I know hospitals have been, you know, denied access to the records uh, as a result of ransomware and, um, you know, patients need, you know, patients and or doctors need that information to, to, to follow some procedure or like to follow up on a patient's medical uh, history and, and uh, give them the treatment that they need and not having access to that can obviously cause a, uh, has a chance of, uh, you know, causing death. But, um, you know, this is, this is obviously a big deal and nobody wants to see a life, uh, you know, a life taken away, especially by this means. And, um, uh, you know, and I'm hopeful that, obviously, you know, we're doing our cybersecurity thing here, and and I'm hoping that the the hospitals take take these things serious as far as like securing their their infrastructure, securing their devices, you know, keeping stuff up to date. As I know, I've seen, you know, I, I think nowadays I, I'm they, they look pretty good. Like I'm seeing a lot of 
systems update, at least like on Windows 10. I remember going to hospitals and, you know, not too long ago and seeing like XP and things like that on their systems. I'm like, what the, what the hell are they doing? They're, they're just they're on this old operating system. And, you know, uh, Windows 10 has been out for however long, like five, uh, no, it's been around for at least a few years now, five, five, six years, I think. Um, and they're still sitting around on XP. But, uh, you know, hopefully these, these hospitals are, are taking this serious because obviously their patients are, um, you know, their responsibility. And like you said before, um, Shannon, that it is like an unfortunate, unfortunate thing is that it is a business. And even as a, as a, as a business, um, you know, they need to make sure that they're providing the best service so that people want to come to them and that they, you know, make sure that their hospital is like, you know, known for being a quality hospital, not known for being, uh, you know, susceptible to ransomware and then patients dying left and right because of, uh, you know, some situation like this. Um, but, you know, like I mentioned, I'm hopeful that that these hospitals kind of take this serious and that they start upgrading the systems. And um, uh, I, I think as well with the hackers and the, in the uh, I think we read some reports, you know, a few weeks back, some other hackers, some ransomware, because we've seen this quite a bit over COVID times, but um, the hackers, I don't think they intentionally, you know, try to harm people. They, they try to, they have some sort of, I think for the most part, they have some sort of ethics, some sort of moral code, even though they're not doing obviously moral, morally good things. Um, they don't want to kill people. They don't want to harm people. Uh, but it's just like a result of their actions that will cause that kind of, uh, this kind of situation to happen, especially when they're targeting the hospitals. Because they think the hospitals um, are going to be under pressure. So they're going to want to pay the money as quickly as possible and get the system back up. Uh, so they're trying to use that as leverage. But um, uh, you know, from some of the, you know, some of the reports that we saw and some of them, like, even with the, um, I think it was the, uh, the it was Revo. So I remember Revo had the same thing. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, we didn't mean to do this. Like, it's right. not, we don't target these things because we don't want to cause undue, undue harm. Right. But you'd be like, but that's an immature, uh, viewpoint of it. Right. Like mm -hmm. you, you are potentially going to kill somebody. Uh, by right. doing that even with a blackout like if you if you knock out power and somebody needs something like let's say the generator fails in the hospital you knock out mm -hmm. the power and then somebody's on life support and they die like mm -hmm. you did that I mean, right. like, there's second and third order uh, effects like every cyber attack is potentially a kinetic kinetic strike mm -hmm. uh, you're not blowing things up with bombs but right. to knock out a generator that's powering people's you know lives they're on a ventilator especially now during covid oh man right the hospital went down they would lose hundreds of patients potentially right yeah it's like a chain reaction yeah it's, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, the, 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 your intent is not what's going to keep you out of jail though right it's always right. The, the end result right, like, right. I, I can't tell you how many people go to <laughs> go to court and be like that was not my intention like well it's manslaughter then right right, right. You, you still yeah you didn't have what the you... intent to go and do whatever it was you know what i mean like if i drunk drive I, I, I don't drink at all so it's not a concern but if i drunk drive it doesn't matter that i left the house and i didn't intend to kill somebody i did i can't go to the judge and be like hey don't throw me in jail because that was not my intention well mm -hmm. that's not how that works you know what i mean yeah. yeah so yeah so another aspect of it i guess would be to ask the question um, is the government more responsible or should there be more governance in, in these privatized hospitals? Uh, so like I was in a, a clubhouse panel and uh, they had uh, people from NHS talking about the same thing about ransomware, how they got hit with WannaCry and how they've changed the way they do business. Uh, so it never happens again. I think they were on Windows 95 at the time when they, when they got hit, mm. something ridiculous mm. like that. Yeah. Um, and just how they had to age up their systems um, as well as um, start to protect them more um, what's crazy is I didn't know the guy who I was talking with because, you know, Clubhouse, you raise your hand and then you can speak. So I was talking directly to this guy. I connected with him on Facebook after. He was the CIO for, for the NHS. So all of NHS. He was their cyber guy. Um, and he was just, you know, just talking about how, how they've changed business. And then when he talked to people in the States, like obviously I, I, I was not a subject matter expert in that regard. I just had questions. Uh, we're not doing the same because it's privatized. Like, so if you want your hospital to be secure, then you need to get a team. You need to get your own CISO. You need to get your X, Y, and Z, as opposed to NHS is obviously socialist, right? So there he is the director across all of it. And then he has people who work underneath him to try to secure all the systems because they're all the same for the most part. 
um, as opposed to us, like you said, some are on 95, some are on XP. Um, some just don't have security teams, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so this continuously uh, get a, get attacked. So is it for the government to step in or do they, or, or do they just need to, uh, do patients just need to start suing? Like, how does that work? Hmm. Yeah. So it's, is it, is it, is it considered a public health thing though? Right. So that's what it comes down to. So right. I, if the government says, okay, we're stepping in because it's a public health issue that if they're out of, if they're out of date, it could be a matter of, you know, losing your records, losing your social security number, you know, things of that nature, or people actually dying, like in this instance, right now, this is, this is harder to sell than, than recent things where people say it's a public health issue, right? It's, it's a little bit of a harder sell because it's not going to be on such a grand scale like it is with COVID. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how we would go about that. And like you said, the guy for, for NHS, I mean, that's, that's a government position, right? It's socialized through England, right? Or the UK or whatever. Yeah. NHS yes. It's the, yeah. The, the whole UK, I think has uh, NHS from, from, uh, uh, I, I don't know how deep it goes. Like, is it just the United Kingdom that has NHS or does it sweep into the rest of Europe as well? That is a question I, I cannot answer. Um, yeah. But I, 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 I think, I it's, I think it's, it's just through Europe. Europe. Yeah, you think so? Okay. I think okay. so. I think it's not just the UK. I think it also sweeps through Europe, at least portions of it. Uh, but I I don't remember when I was in Germany. I never went to, to one of their hospitals. So I don't know. Yeah. Okay, but as opposed to the U.S., it's it's let's say there's a million hospitals, there's a, a million different uh, fiefdoms, right? Like everyone is their own specific uh, proprietized, uh, proprietized, uh, privatized um, uh, enclave, right? So unless they own a bunch of hospitals, like Unnetwork. they're all separate. Yeah. yeah, unless they're within their own, you know, in a, in a wider network, they're all separate. Um, I don't, I don't know of too many government run hospitals aside from like on bases and things of that nature. I'm sure they exist. Um, but for the most part, when you see a hospital, it, it's owned by somebody or it has a board that is owned by of, of multiple people. Right. So they, they could be on 95. It's like, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's what's working for their record system or what have you, or they could have upgraded, but they don't have, <clears throat> like I said, they don't have like a, a CISO or a V-CISO or something like that. Um, but I, I, I honestly, I honestly am concerned, not, not more so than before, because I knew this was going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, it's only a matter of time before this was going to uh, kill somebody. But uh, does this deter um, ransomware gangs? Like, oh, well, we don't want to kill people. Or, or does it show like, oh, okay, now they're skinning the game. Like, they know if we ransom long enough, somebody might die. So we need to, we right. need to go down on this. I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you, you were kind of talking about before with the government, like, um, like it's regulation, I mean, or, you know, government stepping in and you may be making some form of regulation, but I think it's, I think it is important. You know, I know a lot of people, you know, may, many people may have views that, oh, we don't want the government and, you know, encroaching on freedoms and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, but you know, I, I think the government, I think the main purpose of the government is to support the people and protect the people. And um, it's the same same reason you have uh, government regulation on, you know, food products, you have regulation on um, um, housing, you know, contractors have certain regulation that to follow with building houses and make sure that they're safe and structurally safe and uh, water systems and all this kind of stuff. You can't just do everything, you know, whatever, whatever you want, regulation on car parts, building, you know, putting together vehicles, everything like that. Um, so it's like, uh, I think there should be some sort of form of regulation on hospitals to make sure that their systems are up to a certain standard uh, as far as security, physical security, as well as cyber security. Make sure that obviously, you know, we already have the um, information security that they must, you know, maintain medical privacy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think that kind of falls right in line with you know, securing their, their assets and make sure that they don't get these ransomware hacks or make sure that if at least that they did everything in their power to prevent that right, ransomware attack from happening. Obviously nothing's like 100% foolproof, but being able to at least, you know, put your best foot forward and put the best effort forward to uh, secure your systems and have everything in place to make sure that it's, uh, 
it's up to snuff and that you have a disaster recovery plan in place in case the systems go down, you have something that's kind of a back end, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a back end site or whatever you can connect to or whatever you need to to continue your operations. The hospitals already have backup, you know, power supplies. I mean, they have generators, things like that in case power outages. So the same thing should be in place for their information secure, you know, information systems as well. Just got to make sure that they uh, they are prepared for any uh, any kind of uh, uh, attack, any kind of a situation that that happens. So, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, hopefully, um, like you, like uh, Shannon said, she can't get her baby back. But mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, by the time this is over, she owns that hospital. You know what I mean, right. like like yeah, take take that thing from them. Uh, like whatever you can get, just to, just. The, to show not not just out of spite, but just to, to show that there's ramifications, right? If you're not mm -hmm. securing your your systems, you're not protecting your patients, like you potentially could lose everything um, because you you didn't do your due diligence to keep everything safe. So, right, uh, we we will see we'll see what happens. Like uh, a lot of our our stories come back in some some aspect or some regard. So I see this one uh, resurfacing and due to regulation of some sort or due to um, her winning a, a, a windfall lawsuit, uh, which again, doesn't uh, bring her child back, but it, it, it sets a tone. It makes a statement like you, you, there, uh, there are repercussions for not, not doing what you're supposed to do, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, patient safety and security. Mm -hmm. So which right. goes hand in hand with cybersecurity nowadays. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, this, this one was kind of a, more of a somber discussion, you know what I mean? Like, uh, most of our discussions don't have don't lead to fatality, uh, you know. Thank God, but uh, cyber is everywhere. Cyber has an influence, and impact on everyday life, uh, as you can see. So, definitely uh, need to uh, to stay focused. Keep keep doing. Uh, keep keep pro progressing, right? Like keep uh, cybersecurity at the forefront. And make sure we put in the right people, the right resources, the right money, and fill in those slots um, because there are uh, huge shortages and uh, of cybersecurity professionals, especially in uh, the medical field. Like, so I was at, at looking at that not too long ago. Like, they're they're in desperate need of uh, cybersecurity professionals from from the top down uh, to work in hospitals. So there is that. But uh, continue to tune in. So we talked about Monday, Tuesday, and uh, Wednesday. So please tune in for Friday if you want to talk about everything else that's not cyber, uh, where we should have some really good discussions as well. Uh, hit up the website, www.theothersideofthefirewall.com, where you can get to all our social media stuff. And then you can hit me up uh, personally. I'm at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. I am on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Twitter, and TikTok. And you, LeVon? Hit me up on the Twitters at LeVon Maynard. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure. Take care. Thank you.